What is up athletes? Today, you're gonna learn the slide, the glide, the moonwalk of tennis. Call it what you want, you're gonna be drifting across the court like a F1 race car. Because when you're able to master the slide, you're able to reach balls that would otherwise zoom by you. You're able to recover for the next shot in a fraction of the time. And when you're able to place your shots well as you slide, you're gonna be able to go from defense to offense like that. Unless your opponent does that, then I don't know what you can do. Now, before we get into how to slide, I wanna start this video off with a quick disclaimer that 99% of tennis players shouldn't ever learn how to slide. Uh, and it's because it requires a lot of strength, flexibility, and very healthy joints. And even if you have perfect joints and perfect sliding technique, even if you do everything correctly, you're still going to be putting a lot of stress on your ankle, knee, and hip. So I don't want this video to encourage you to slide if you, know, you weren't planning to. This video is more for those of you who were gonna slide anyways. Uh, you know, if you're going to attempt it, you might as well learn how to do it the right way. So again, this is not professional sliding advice. Consult your sliding physician before you slide. <laughs> <laughs> this video is for entertainment purposes yeah. only. But seriously, if you don't think sliding is right for you, don't worry world-class players that have defended at a world-class level, like Federer or Murray, rarely ever slide, and instead they use a series of defensive footwork patterns, like the mogul step, cross step, and side step, to be able to get to all of these shots, and sometimes hit an even higher quality shot than if you were to try to slide. And we'll talk about that more in the future. With that said, there are four steps to sliding in tennis, and we're gonna start with step number one, the prep. The sliding shot starts just like any other. You're wide and low in your ready position. Now, as soon as players read where the ball is going, they're gonna turn toward the side of the incoming ball. But you're gonna wanna break out of the typical unit turn and cross-stepping or side-stepping technique to move to the ball. Because when you're sliding, the ball is usually further away from you and you're short on time, which means that you're gonna be in more of a sprinting position. On the forehand side, players will typically also release their offhand off of the racket immediately as they begin running. On the backhand side, they'll keep both hands on the racket unless the ball is just super far away. And this allows them to stabilize their racket more so that they have more control over their swing. In any case, you wanna make sure that your head is upright and stable and that your hitting arm isn't flailing about. As players get closer to the ball, they initiate one big final step that we call the slide step. And there are five keys to mastering the slide step so that you have a quality shot. The first key is to take a wide step. There's no half commitment to a slide. You can really only do a slide by fully committing and that starts with taking a wide step. You see, the wider your step, the lower and wider your stance is gonna be as you slide. And this is critical because the lower your center of gravity and further away your center of gravity is from the position of your sliding foot, the less likely you are to topple over and more control you'll have over stabilizing your upper body as you hit your shot. You need to be in a similar position to a race car that's drifting across the track. There's a wide base, it's low to the ground with its wheels spread wide apart. And in contrast, a tractor would just tip over if you tried to do the same thing. The second key is to take that slide step with a relatively straight leg. You don't want your knees to be locked out because that's gonna put extra stress on that knee as well as on your hamstring. But if your leg is too bent as your foot strikes the ground, your knee will want to continue bending in order to decelerate your momentum, making sliding impossible. So instead, as you keep your leg straight, you want the frictional force of your foot sliding or your shoe sliding against the ground to be the thing that decelerates your momentum. Number three, you want your foot to be striking the ground from heel to toe. Or anatomically, you want your ankle to be in dorsiflexion. 
This position is critical because if you step with the balls of your feet, as you would on many typical shots in tennis, there's too much sideways force going on. And as a result, it becomes really easy to roll your ankle. So here's a pro tip to make sure you're sliding correctly. When you're stepping with that heel, try not to think of that step as moving down. Don't step down. Instead, you wanna think about pushing your foot out toward the direction of your slide. You're pushing your foot outward almost like you're drying the court with a towel so that you're stepping sideways with the heel instead of down. If you try this out on a low traction surface, like uh, with your socks on a hardwood floor, you'll immediately notice that if you step with your legs straight, relatively far away from you, and leading with your heel, then automatically your foot will start to slide. Now along with stepping from heel to toe, tip number four is also critical in helping you protect your ankles as you slide. And that is to have your foot rotated outward in the direction of your slide. You see, as you're sliding, you have tons of sideways momentum. And if your foot is also pointing sideways, then its direction is perpendicular to the direction of your momentum, which makes it very prone to rolling over sideways. So instead, when you're sliding laterally, you wanna make sure that your foot is rotated outward at least 45 degrees, and when you're sliding forward, let's say you're chasing a drop shot, then you'll naturally have your foot pointing forward, which is great. And number five, as you step out with your leading foot, you wanna lag the other leg behind while keeping it relatively straight. As you begin that sliding step, striding out toward the ball, your other leg can help you to propel yourself in the direction of the ball. And that'll help you create even more momentum after running toward the ball to slide more effectively. It's almost like you're leaping to the side. But as you begin gliding across the court, you wanna make sure that your non-sliding leg is remaining relatively straight and lagging behind you. This is gonna position your center of gravity further away from that leading foot, allowing you to retain your balance while you slide. And depending on the direction of your slide, you might notice that your non-sliding foot is also dragging across the court. If you're sliding sideways, it's common to roll that foot inward so that the inside of your foot is dragging against the court. And if you're sliding forward, you might notice that the toe part of your shoe is dragging against the court. That's okay in terms of technique, but it is a shoe wrecker. <laughs> so be warned, sliding can be expensive. Now that you understand how to slide, the question then becomes, how do you hit an effective shot while you're sliding? There are several limitations to the shot that make it inherently weaker and harder to control. And for that reason, players are typically gonna slide only in defensive situations. First, because your legs are fully extended and completely grounded, it's gonna be impossible to use your leg drive and use that hip rotation to generate power. Secondly, as you slide, there's going to be a constant sideways momentum applied to your upper body, almost like someone's pushing your shoulders over as you try to hit your shot and your trunk muscles are gonna be needing to stabilize and resist that force. And number three, because you have less power generated and your trunk is less stable, you're gonna have less control over your swing. So instead of trying to hit big, aiming toward big targets with a good amount of accuracy becomes the key to a good sliding shot. And because of this, the most common shot variation you'll see while players are sliding is typically going to be the slice. Here's how that's done. You're gonna wanna execute that sliding step with your right leg so that you're stepping into an open stance as you slide. This is gonna open your body up and thus allow you to extend your arm across your body for power and control on the forehand slice. On the backhand side, you're gonna wanna lead with the same leg. If you're a righty again, you're doing the sliding step with your right leg, except this time, you're gonna be sliding into a closed stance. And this is gonna close your body off further backward, which on your backhand side allows you to again, extend your arm downward and across your body for an effective slice. And if you're running up to get that short ball, that drop shot, then you're typically gonna to wanna to slide in the same stance, leading with the right leg for an open stance on the forehand and a closed stance on the backhand. Now, occasionally you'll see some players using a topspin shot as they slide. 
Djokovic is pretty well known for this shot, the open stance sliding two-handed backhand, and this allows him to neutralize the rally if his opponent is at the baseline, or very dangerously, it allows him to hit really accurate cross-court and down-the-line angle passing shots if his opponent dares to try to come in. And this is really mostly possible because there are two hands on the racket, allowing you to make little adjustments at contact. On the one-handed backhand, you have much less stability because you have one hand on the racket and you're using the weaker side of your body. And as a result, you typically won't want to slide as you hit your one-handed backhand. But if you're using a two-hander and you want to hit that sliding backhand topspin shot, then you're going to want to lead with your left leg so that you end up in an open stance as you slide. And lastly, you could hit your forehand topspin shot as you slide. Some players do it, but because you don't have your hips involved, you won't get as much power. And as a result, it's typically more effective to just run through your shot on your forehand side because you have that space to extend across your body, unlike on the backhand side. And the last option is to hit the ball with that running step and then slide during your recovery. And one more note is that on clay and grass surfaces, you'll have much, much less friction of your shoe against the court as you slide. And thus, sliding will be easier and you'll have many more options for shot selection. At the end of the day, sliding is highly intuitive. So once you understand the basic fundamentals to begin to slide and to slide safely, you can start to experiment with a bunch of different shot variations and find what works best for you. So you've retrieved the ball with an expert slide, but the point isn't over yet. The recovery is where you go from good defensive player to court coverage king. So the frictional force of your shoes sliding against the court is gonna naturally bring you to a stop. And at this point, what you've got to focus on is fighting your upper body from falling forward. It's going to feel like there's a force pushing or pulling your upper body to fall forward and down. But if you end up falling, then it's going to slow down your recovery. So you want to stay upright and allow your legs to do the work for the recovery. The exception is if the ball is super wide, then you're gonna to need to take a really wide step and that's gonna depend on how flexible you are. And at that point, your upper body might fall forward and you can catch yourself with your hands. It might lead to a slower recovery, but at least you got to the ball. Now to start the recovery process, you wanna bring that non-sliding leg in toward the center of your body. This will tilt your body toward the center and from here, you can push against the ground with that non-sliding leg to propel your body back toward the center and allow you to recover quickly. To apply your slide to an actual game, you're also gonna need great racket control. And the key to this is to generate core and hitting arm stability. Now, the lunge hit is similar to the slide. You wanna focus on keeping your head up and your spine straight by tightening your core and controlling your swing path. Now, the tendency here is to overreact and overhit. If you find yourself hitting into the net or hitting out, you wanna slow down your swing and focus on the quality of your contact. And if you can develop consistency with your lunge shot, sliding and hitting with control will become second nature. Now we're gonna create another video dedicated to drills for advanced footwork and sliding. So be sure to subscribe and press the notification button so that you're notified as soon as we release that video. Now, I know we covered a lot in this video and that's why we made our ultimate sliding checklist that you can download as a PDF or print out and take onto the court so that you can apply everything in this video right away. And when we start talking about subjects like sliding, you could start to see how athletically demanding tennis can actually be at higher levels. And that's why we're considering making an entire tennis fitness routine all here on YouTube, uh, covering core routines, footwork, injury prevention, all of it. So let me know in the comments below if you want to see that fitness series and specifically what fitness topics do you want us to cover in the future. As always athletes, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, go out and train hard. I'll see you in the next video. No way.
I hit it over the net. <laughs>